Hey guys, in this video I'll be teaching you how to create this foamy plastic looking cloth shader here. It's ridiculously easy. I'll also walk you through how to set up this scene for your own render. As always, all the project files for this tutorial will be available for download free on my Gumroad. Link in the description. Anyway, let's get started. Jumping into a new blend file here, I'm using 3.1.2 and I'm going to go ahead and delete the default cube and quickly add in a plane. Now this is going to be our object that we're going to apply the material on. So let's scale it up a bit like that. That's all right. And apply that scale. Now let's, let's move that up. I'm going to give this some subdivisions. So let's subdivide it and you'll see why in a bit. But I think for now, uh, what we can do is quickly set up some lighting so that we can see our material as we make it. So I'm going to add an area lamp and we'll probably change this as we go, just so that we don't have to, uh, you know, worry about it all at the start. Don't know why that took so long there. I'm going to go into cycles and change my device to my GPU. Now, let's see what we have here. I'm going to turn this up to about 44, change the world environment to black. Move this up. I'm going to add in another one and put it over here and rotate it around like that. All right. Now this obviously isn't the uh, most professional lighting setup, but it will just allow us to see what we're doing when we get to the shading. So let's open up the shading tab here, go into our camera view, which I am going to center. And in our rendering tab, let's create a new material. And this is going to be our plastic sort of foam. And this is where the fun starts. As I said before, it is a ridiculously easy material to make. It's only a couple, uh, a couple of nodes. So we're going to get started on that. First, we're going to add in a color ramp here. Place that down. I'm going to connect this up to my base color. And this is going to be our color picking for the different uh, shades of blue that we're going to have in our material. First up here, let's, yeah, let's do something different. I'm going to go with orange. And this is going to be our light orange, so a really light orange. And then our black value here, this is going to be another, a, the same shade of orange. Sorry, the, yeah, the same orange, but a different shade. And this is going to be our dark, dark orange. And we can actually even add some saturation to that. Now let's add in a mid-tone here. And sorry, I'm going to really quickly... Yeah, okay. Let's add in a mid-tone here. Maybe a slightly different color. And move that sort of in the middle there. That looks all right. Next up here, I'm going to add in a mix shader. Uh, sorry, a mix RGB. Completely different nodes. And connect that up to the color of the color ramp. And then the first input of this mix RGB is going to be a noise texture. Not a white noise, just a noise texture. And I'm going to connect the color up like that. And let's have a look here. What do we, what kind of values we want? I'm probably going to get six should work well. And this is going to just give us a little bit of color variation. So that's, that's nice to have. And detail, I'm going to bump that up to 15. Roughness, I'm going to go about 0 0.67. That's probably all right. Distortion, we don't need any of that for what we're doing. And I'm going to add in another color ramp here and connect that to the second input of the mix shader node. And then into, into the factor of this color ramp, we're going to be adding in a Voronoi texture. And this is what's going to give us our actual, I should say, foamy detail. So let's connect the color up. Actually, sorry, let's connect the distance up. Uh, change this to smooth F1 so we get a nice smoother transition and we get this uh, smoothness uh, slider here that we can tweak. I'm going to bump the scale up to 350 uh, so we can see we've got a nice bump happening here. Now real quick if your scale looks off just apply the scale of your plane uh, before you go further because you might have to change a bunch of parameters if you forget to do that. Smoothness Let's just bring this down about 0.7. I'm going to I'm going to clamp this color ramp down on the black value so we get a bit more variation happening there. 
And this last step will make the biggest difference. Bring the roughness down to about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Still get a bit of roughness, but not too much. I think that looks good. Next step is to add in a bump node. And this will give us some, well, bump and some actual variation in lighting across our material. So let's plug the color ramp into the height of our bump node. Let's have a look at our principal BSDF and that doesn't look great. And the reason why that doesn't look great is we have to just change the strength here. Let's bring it down. So it's not too harsh. We don't want it to be too harsh. Maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. And that looks all right. And I said this was really easy. That's because it is pretty much done. The only thing left here is we're going to change a few parameters of our principal BSDF. Like I might give it a little bit of subsurface scattering. So maybe 0 .0, 0 0.001 because it's quite potent. And I'm going to change the subsurf color to something orangey. And that's it. Now, before we can really test our uh, material and make sure it looks you know right we have to put it in a you know, adequate lighting situation so i'm going to add in a plane i'm going to move that plane down scale it all the way up like that i'm probably going to put it down a little bit further and this will give us our soft sort of softbox environment so select these two edges and extrude them up and now we can what we can do from that is Select these inside edges and bevel them. Now I can give them a big bevel. You can give them a small bevel and then add a subdiv. It's up to you. I'm going to give them a big bevel. That looks good. And obviously this still doesn't look very nice. I've got a bit of work to do. So let's move our camera. Position like that could work. I'm going to make uh, my frame square. So 2048 by 2048. If you don't want such a high resolution, 1024 by 1024 could work well, but 2048 is good for me. And I'm going to move that in a little bit. Now, the next step here is lighting. Uh, this is often the hardest because it's quite tricky to get right if you don't know what you're looking for. But essentially, I want to give this a white background. So the way I'm going to do that is by lighting the background, uh, lighting the backdrop, I should say. So I'm going to change the power of this lamp to maybe 200. And that doesn't look half bad. Move this one up. And this is probably going to be a backlight. So let's rotate that on the X and the Z until we get it uh, sort of pushing light from behind. Now, the last thing I want to do here. Oh, I want to make sure I'm recording. Yes, I am. Okay, good. Last thing I want to do here for our lighting is add in a sort of a fill light. So we've got this, uh, we've got this uh, area light here, but I'm gonna duplicate it, move it across, rotate it around and change the power to like, I don't know, 30, and then scale it on the local Z, local X like that. And this will be rotated. This will uh, sort of fill in some of those dark shadows. Now in your camera view, this should look okay, but it's just a plane. There's nothing like, sure, we've got a material on there. And if we were to render this real quick to make sure our material is okay. So about partway through the render here. And yeah, our material looks looks fine. But our issue is that how scene setup is not doing it any justice. So let's just go back to the original camera position here. And a way I like to present fabrics or sort of foamy soft materials is a cloth sim. So I'm gonna add in a UV sphere here, and this is gonna be our collision object. So if I move this up to about where we want the, the piece of cloth to, to stand, and I'm gonna set this to shade smooth just cause, you know, I don't know, I like doing that. <laughs> There's no reason to, it's not gonna be in view, but it looks nice in the viewport. And I'm gonna give this a collision, a physics object, and uncheck it from the render. Now next, if I just move our, our piece of cloth, I guess, up and add in a cloth sim, we can add some uh, in the collision setting, we can add some into self collision and bump the quality steps up to 10 layout here. If we were to play this, right? 
that's pretty disgusting. And the reason for that is, yeah, it just doesn't have enough geometry. So I'm going to subdivide it once more, add in a subdivision surface modifier. And after you've done that, I'm going to add in a solidify modifier to give us some thickness because otherwise it's just an infinitely thin plane and that doesn't work very well. Set it to shade smooth, add a little bit of thickness. And let's play our animation now. Look at that. That looks so much nicer. So if we were to take a look at our lighting, oh, it's not really there yet. Main thing I think is this isn't strong enough. Yeah, there we go. So let's push that up. And I don't think this, this light here is strong enough either. There's a lot of competition in the lighting. I kind of want this fill light to be quite soft as well. So I'm going to increase the size. Now with our sphere here, we don't need it, but we're not going to delete it. So like I said, hide it from the render, but also hide it from the viewport. Now, if we were take a, to take a look at this, we're still getting these jagged edges here. That's okay. We've got our subdivision surface modifier. And as long as this is set to two in the render, we should be okay. So let's render this out and see how, see how it looks. Now this is looking quite nice. Uh, another thing I would suggest is we've got all this white space around our, our focus here and, well, it's a bit too much. So I'm going to grab my camera, press G and middle mouse button, then I can slide it in here and focus it on our object. Um, yeah, let's try re-render that, see how it looks. Now by default, uh, Blender actually sets this to 4096 uh, max samples, which is bit too high for me. Um, I get that you with cycles X, you can just leave it running and work it up, but I'm going to just push this down to maybe 500. So it stops naturally. Um, finally, every good render needs a denoiser. So I'm going to add in a denoise node. Uh, if you want to have a play around with colors, maybe change some parameters or try adding some nodes, see what they do. If I was you, I'd definitely think about doing some post-processing. Even the smallest of touch-ups can make a huge difference to the final result. Uh, all the project files for this, uh, for this tutorial will be free on my Gumroad, so go check that out. And you can find me on Instagram. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.